Welcome back, movie kings and queens. Timbo here. Today, I'm not here to review a movie. I wanted to talk about something else movie-related, though. But recently, I watched the movie Skinamarink. Mild spoilers for anyone who has not seen this film and still plan on seeing it. If you need to, skip here. It's about a couple of kiddos who wake up to find that they're alone in their home after the sun falls down the stairs and receives a minor head injury. They check the house to find that their parents aren't there, and they also find nothing in the house on except for a TV. And on top of that, now they're stuck inside this house that's having their doors, windows, and toilets starting to slowly fade away. Kind of like Marty McFly's brother and sister, but also they are stuck with the spooky monster from under the bed. By the end of this movie, the kids are trapped in this hellscape with their whole reality being warped. The daughter having her eyes and mouth removed by this entity and the son being forced to live on in this in this w place they used to call home for what we at least know to be almost 600 days with no hope of seeing a regular life ever again. While I feel this movie did have a pretty long runtime, it did leave me with a sense of dread that I've only experienced from one other thing in my life, and that is creepypastas. Now, I hear what you're asking. Creepypastas? What the heck is that? And no, it isn't the old pasta you would get from the lunch lady in middle school. Creepypastas are internet horror stories or urban legends that were created by ghost writers and were passed along the World Wide Web to be told like campfire stories that scare you and your best pals or worst enemies. Now, growing up in the 2000s as an only child, I had what you would call a VIP all-exclusive access pass to the internet. I was exposed to a lot of things on the internet that probably would have needed parents' permission, but that's probably another video entirely. One of the websites I would typically explore was a website just simply titled creepypasta.com. On this website, you could and still can to this day find some pretty disturbing and detailed tales that would make any kid want to be comforted with a Capri Sun and a pillow pet. So what makes a creepypasta creepy? Well, Johnny, I'm glad you asked. Most creepypastas follow a very similar but very loose set of rules which I am now going to provide you in a nice bulletin format, PowerPoint presentation style. A lot of these stories are typically just photos and have no plot, no lore, and expect you as the reader or viewer to create the monstrous ideas that will fill your head. For example, when Slender Man was created, there was nothing but a brief description given to these haunting images of kids playing while a tall figure with tentacles stood behind them in the darkness. The description just says that this is the photo of the 14 children who went missing to the Slender Man. Another example of this would be Jeff the Killer. The origins of this photo had no story behind it, just the photo of this pale-faced, emotionless human. To be honest, as a kid, this photo probably scared me the way that Momo face probably scared kids growing up. It honestly haunted my nightmares a lot of the times as a kid. Um, luckily for me now, though, I have a nice little Google Mini in my room when I sleep at night and I can play nice rain sounds. Creepypastas are terrifying because they they don't have anything to tie them to reality. They're, they're everywhere and nowhere at the same time. Kind of like Batman. Every creepypasta I've ever viewed, tasted, and hailed with my eyes has felt nostalgic to me. They will relate to you from things you may have experienced as a child, but then will take those sweet memories that you had and they'll twist them into the ground and push them in the mud and make you feel bad. One of my favorite versions of this type of negative nostalgia is a YouTube channel called Petscop. It's a Let's Play type series based off of a fake PS1 game that slowly turns into not, not what you think it would be. If you like ARG type videos that are based around creepypasta style things, I think you would really like this. Another one I think you should really check out is Blame Truth's creepypasta video about a haunted Pokemon Blue game. This video and Skinamarink are 
the reason I wanted to make this video, and honestly, I think what Anthony did with the video and what he made after is the reason I have so much love for the genre of horror today. Now, this last rule is what I believe is the core to every good creepypasta. It makes them that next level. And that, my friends, is... Kids being in scary movies is like grass being green. It's like cereal going in the bowl before milk. It's essential. I mean, any type of horror medium has typically kids in it. It, The Shining, Five Nights at Freddy's. Literally any medium of horror has some kids doing some shit that is either evil or is playing too close to evil. And you know Creepypasta's got to have a piece of that pie as well. Another reason I think kids are so prevalent in creepypastas is because a lot of creepypastas are based off of, again, nostalgia, things that you remember as a kid. So they are essentially designed for kids. So having your main character that's being attacked in these horror stories be another kid, it's just, again, essential. I mean, I was one of the OG kids getting scared of shit in my bed as a kid, being so scared that I would have to literally watch Sweet Life of Zack and Cody as I would go to bed. Ah, uh, the sweet sound of Mr. Mosby's voice. Creepypastas would not be as popular as they are without kids. So next time you see a kid, thank them for their service. Timbo, I gotta ask, why are you talking about creepypastas and how does this relate to Skinnamarink? What I'm trying to say is that Skinnamarink, while it was not the movie I was hoping it would be, gave me an appreciation for the horror stories of my childhood. And it proved that it is possible to make a liminal and creepypasta-esque movie. Some movies that I think have slightly fit into the mold of creepypastas are Paranormal Activity, The Blair Witch Project, or as me and my friends like to call them, The Blair Bitch Project, and Sinister. All these movies have that eeriness that comes with reading creepypastas, but are still made for most general audiences. What I would really like to see is a remake of the Slender Man movie and have it directed by the director of Skinnamarink. Or better yet, give us a haunted a haunted video game and have it in the movie style of, like, The Ring. So, I may have not liked Skin and Rink overall, but it was definitely a love letter to the creepypastas that I really enjoyed. And it made me grateful and nostalgic to look back on those types of stories and think that, you know, there is a future for this style of horror movie. But let me now turn the tables to you. What do you feel about creepypastas? Do you think they have a role in the horror movie genre? Do you think something from your childhood could be considered nostalgic enough to warrant a creepypasta? Let me know in the comments. Also, again, I highly recommend checking out the movie Skin and Rink. Just check it out for yourself. See how you feel about it. And then also, the other video that inspired me for this is Blame Truth's uh, Pokemon Blue video. Uh, you can probably just... I just YouTube searched Blame Truth Pokemon Blue and it's like the first it's the first video and I even have it in the thumbnails the background you'll see it and also while you're down there make sure to hit that like and subscribe button it helps the channel grow helps me as a person grow and gives me some confidence and as always I'm Timbo and I just talked about that peace